Hello again. Um, in this week's lecture, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, traffic flow fundamental characteristics. How do we measure traffic? What is the relationship between uh, different characteristics of traffic flow? A couple of acknowledgments before I continue. Some of the slides you'll see in this lecture and the next lecture are uh, borrowed from um, slides that have been used previously, but many other professors um, uh, in Australia or the US and also Netherlands. Uh, thanks to Professor Washburn, Professor Bertini, uh, Professor Van Lent, Dr. Shiva Cody, and Dr. Ramsey. Um, I've used some of their material in my slides today, and they all had an impact on uh, my studies when I was a student. A bit of introduction before we dive into the fundamental characteristics of traffic flow. Uh, so when we're talking about uh, traffic, we need to acknowledge that there are several elements in place and that are interacting with each other. Obviously, the first one is the driver um, that is driving the vehicle. The second element is the vehicle itself it has some characteristics, it has some physical limitations. Uh, for example, the maximum speed, the maximum acceleration. Um, the driver of the vehicle, as the human being behind the wheel, also has limitations, such as like the reaction time, uh, our cognitive capacity, how much information can we observe and digest uh, while we are driving. The driver and the vehicle Yes, they interact, but they also interact with the infrastructure. When I'm saying infrastructure, I mean, for example, the road, the signs around us, the intersection, the traffic control devices around us when we are driving. So all of that uh, work in an interactive manner. The driver sees the red light, push the brake, the vehicle brakes. If the vehicle is a connected vehicle, meaning that it can send and receive messages to the infrastructure, it may send some messages to the traffic signal that, hey, I'm slowing down or I'm speeding up. Um, and all of these three elements themselves are actually within the bigger environment that we drive in. Um, the environment could be represented as, um, you know, am I driving in a sunny day or a rainy day or a snowy? Um, is it hot? Is it cold? All of that will affect the performance of the driver and the vehicle itself. So when we're talking about traffic and traffic engineering, it's important to consider all these four different elements um, in a system. Because drivers behave differently and each driver drives in his or her own unique way, um, it is almost impossible to describe traffic flow as theoretically concisely as other physical phenomena like fluid dynamics or gas kinetics. Traffic is not like fluid or gas exactly. It, yes, it has some similarities, but it's not exactly the same as fluid and gas, right? So it is impossible to exactly use the same models as we see in physics to describe the movement of traffic. Having said that, there are some models that have borrowed ideas from fluid dynamics or gas kinetic uh, to model traffic, but with some modifications and adap uh, adoption. Um, having said that, we still need quantitative techniques to measure traffic, to assess some operational measures of the roadway and its performance. So we can actually analyze and evaluate um, the performance of transport facilities to design roads, to design some improvement for these facilities, to design traffic signal controls. All of that requires some fundamental um, quantitative measures. When we're talking about traffic flow uh, in general, we have two types of flow environments. The first one is uninterrupted flow. Um, where traffic flow is influenced by characteristics of the roadway and interactions of vehicles within the traffic stream only. 
that means the traffic is not going to get affected by uh, any traffic control device. So examples of uninterrupted flow is highways, expressways, freeways, um, where we don't have traffic signals in place. So vehicles can, as long as traffic allows, vehicles can keep driving. However, the second type, the interrupted flow, that is a traffic stream that operates under the influence of traffic control devices. And when I say traffic control devices, I don't necessarily just mean traffic signals. It could be a stop sign. It could be, it could be a yield sign. It could be a, um, I don't know, a, a sign that says pedestrians are crossing, so you have to stop when a pedestrian shows up. Um, so arterials, you know, urban roadways are examples of interrupted flow. So we have uninterrupted flow and interrupted flow. And um, in this course, we're going to cover uh, both of these kind of flows to uh, some extent. There are three main variables that form the basics of traffic analysis. These are the fundamental measures that we use in traffic flow. The first one is flow itself, Q, which we usually represent as Q. Um, Speed is the second measure. It's usually represented either as U or V, representing velocity. And density, which is usually represented as K. I'm going to measure. I'm, I'm going to talk about the definition of each of them and how we can measure in a minute. So flow, speed, and density are the three main variables, um, as I said. But there are two other secondary variables that are related to all those three. Headway and spacing. We usually represent headway as H and spacing as S. So going back to the three main um, traffic flow variables, um, flow is simply defined as the number of vehicles that pass uh, some designated point on a roadway over a specific duration of time. For example, if this is my road and this is a point on the road, if I start counting the vehicles that pass this point over time, for example, I do the, I start counting the vehicles that pass through this specific point over, let's say, five minutes, and I and, and in that five minutes, I count, let's say, uh, 20 vehicles passing that specific point. So flow is simply 20 vehicles over five minutes. And if you want to make it to, if you want to change the unit to vehicle per hour, you just simply do the unit conversion. So this is five minutes and this is vehicles and five minutes is uh, one over 12 of an hour, right? Um, so you can simply do the calculation and get the uh, vehicle per hour equivalent of uh, four vehicles per minute, right? So that's flow. Before going to talk about a speed, I'd like to talk about headway because that's directly related to flow. Headway is defined as the time between the passage of the front bumper of successive vehicles, again, at some designated or fixed point on the road. So for example, again, if I draw a road and this is a point I'm going to do the measurements in, and if this is a single vehicle that is passing through this point, as soon as the front bumper passes this designated point. If I record the time, let me record the time as T1. So vehicle one passes. And then at time two, another vehicle comes. So again, front bumper of the vehicle. And this is time two. So I would say the headway between these two vehicles is actually T2 minus T1. If I want to draw it 
in a different way, again, if this is my road, if this is the first vehicle that is passing this designated point, and this is the second vehicle that is following that vehicle. So at time T1, I see vehicle number one passing. At time T2, I see vehicle number two passing. T2 minus T1 gives me the headway between these two vehicles. So it's simply the time between the passage of the front bumpers of the successive vehicles. And obviously, if you keep, because it is in the nature of time, uh, if you sum the headways up for successive vehicles, you have this total duration of your measurements. For example, if I'm measuring all the headways over five minutes, if I sum up all those headways that I have measured and observed over that five minutes, it will give me that, it will be equal to that five minutes that I'm doing the calculation for. Because T is time, right? That's the unit of time. Headway is also in the unit of time. So summation of multiple times, the small times between the vehicles will give me that bigger time interval that I'm doing the calculation for. So the relationship between flow and headway is very interesting. Um, and as I said, they're directly related. Flow is simply the inverse of the average headway. So if you calculate average headway, uh, which is summation of all those individual headways divided by the number of vehicles that I'm, count, that I'm counting, right? And if I simply take that inverse value, this will give me the average flow. So there is an inverse relationship between average flow and average headway. Moving on to speed, uh, average speed uh, can be defined in two different ways. Um, this might be something new for you to, 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 to learn. Um, we have time mean speed or spot mean speed. And we also have something called a space mean speed. Most of the time, the kind of speed that we deal with and we measure usually is the time mean speed or instantaneous point speeds, which is the average speed of all vehicles passing a point on the roadway over a specific time. So again, imagine this is a road. Imagine there are multiple vehicles that are moving on the road. And I'm standing right here doing the measurements. So as soon as every vehicle, as soon as each vehicle passes this observation point, I measure the instantaneous speed. For example, this, this would be UY, U2, and U3. So these are the instantaneous speed of these vehicles passing this specific point that I'm making the observation at. So time mean speed is simply the average, the regular average, or the arithmetic average of the instantaneous speed of these, all these vehicles, which is simply, I use index T here to represent the time mean speed, which is the average of all these instantaneous speeds. However, space mean speed is slightly different. Space mean speed is the average speed of all vehicles occupying a given section on the roadway over a specified over over a specific time period. And that is essentially the inverse of travel time for all the vehicles over that specific section of the road. This, this second definition of a speed, or this a space mean a speed definition, is actually more useful in the context of traffic flow theory and analysis. And it actually is determined on the basis of the time necessary for a vehicle to travel some known length of a roadway. But how do we actually measure space mean a speed? Space mean a speed relates directly to how long a vehicle drives over a specific time. So if this is my space mean a speed, and I have the, so for example, again, let me draw another road. Um, to calculate the space mean speed, I need to have a specific length of the road um, in place or for, for the measurement. So for example, I'm doing the calculation of a space mean speed from here to here, okay? So from X1 
to x2. And this length of the road is L. So vehicles start coming into this specific section of the road and they will exit, right? After some time, they will exit. So each vehicle here will take some time to pass through this distance of L on the road, right? So for example, vehicle number one takes T1 time to pass this distance of L. Vehicle number two takes T2 minutes to pass L. And vehicle number three takes T3 minutes to pass this specific, enter and exit this specific section of the roadway. And if I take the average of all these different three times, which is simply one over n summation of ti or t1 plus t2 plus t3 over n, right? So I can then calculate space mean speed simply as the length of the road that I did the measurement for divided by the average time that all these vehicles are taking to pass this specific length of the road. So that's space mean speed, which is different than the time mean speed. And we're going to see some examples uh, in a minute. So if you do some um, mathematical manipulations here, we'll end up seeing that space mean speed can actually be represented as the harmonic mean speed when the uh, har harmonic, harmonic speed of uh, the instantaneous speeds of the vehicles. So for example, again, if I go back to this formula, you see we have the space mean speed is equal to L distance divided by the average time, right? So US is L divided by the average time. And if I replace this average time with its formula, which is one over N summation of all those individual T's. And now if I take this L and bring it into the denominator, I will end up having one over one N summation of ti over l and then if i rewrite this in a more simpler way it would be 1 over 1n summation of 1 over l over ti and that is the summation over n and that is actually the formula for harmonic mean speed if some of you remember um, so harmonic mean speed, so we have two type of uh, averages, right? We have two type of average. We have two type of mean. One was arithmetic and the other one was harmonic. And again, imagine I have, uh, imagine I have UI, UIs are my speeds, okay? And if I wanna take the arithmetic speed, arithmetic average, sorry, if I want to take the arithmetic average of these speeds, it's simply, um, it's simply the summation of UIs over N, right? But the harmonic mean is N over summation of one over U. And this here is actually one over u, right? Because u is L over T, distance traveled divided by time. So T over L, this is one over u. That's why we said this is this represents the harmonic mean. So anyways, this was the arithmetic mean. We just summed the speeds up divided by the number of vehicles. But when we want to do the sum, but if we want to do the harmonic mean, it's the number of vehicles divided by summation of the inverse of their speeds. So this is basically n over one u1 plus one over u2 plus one over u3. So this is how harmonic mean is calculated. If you 
I remember from uh, probably high school or early undergrad uh, mathematics you had. Moving on to density, density can be defined as the number of vehicles divided by the number of vehicles that I can observe over a specific length of a road. So this is similar to ex this is this is this is similar to a case that we are flying over a road. So imagine this is a road. This is from x1 to x2 on the road, and this distance is l. And I'm flying on the road, or I have a camera on top of it, or a drone is moving on top of the road, and I see some vehicles moving. So if I simply count the number of vehicles I see on that specific length of the road divided by the length of the road, that would give me density. So in this case, it would be, in this uh, makeup case, it would be four divided by whatever that L is. If you remember, I said spacing is another secondary measure that we sometimes use in traffic analysis, and that is relate, directly related to density. So spacing um, is actually the, uh, the, the, the distance uh, between the front bumper and front bumper of vehicles. So again, if this is a road from X1 to X2, and this length is L, and I have, let's say, two vehicles moving. So this spacing measuring from the front bumper to front bumper. So this is, let's say that uh, this is S. This is the spacing between these two vehicles. And obviously, if I have multiple vehicles on this, a specific section of the road. The summation of multiple successive spacings, very similar to what we had in for headway, the summation of multiple spacings would give me the total length that these vehicles are occupying on the road. So imagine I had another vehicle here and also another vehicle here. So I would have I would have had S1, S2, and S3. So S1 plus S2 plus S3 gives me equal to it's it's equal to L, right? So that's the that's the easy uh, that's an easy equation to uh, to derive. But then if we replace that uh, in if we replace that L in the density formula, so we said density is equal to the number of vehicles we can observe over a specific length of the road. And from the spacing definition, we can say N over, instead of putting L, what about we say the summation of S. And then if I bring N into the denominator, that give me one over N summation of SI. And what is this? That's average spacing, right? So what we just derived is an inverse relationship between average density and average spacing. Very similar to the relationship we had between flow and headway. If you remember, we had flow is equal one over average headway. Density is equal to one over average spacing. So that is how all these five measures that we talked about are related. So we had, what did we have? We have um, flow, speed, and density. We usually call them macroscopic measures because uh, they measure some macroscopic characteristics of the traffic streams. It's kind of an average uh, across multiple vehicles. Um, and we had two other variables called headway and spacing. So we had a speed, density, and flow, which are macroscopic measures, and we have headway and spacing that are often referred to as microscopic measures because they describe 
the characteristics are specific to individual pairs of vehicles. A spacing is the distance between front bumper to front bumper of successive vehicles, while headway is the time between the front bumper to front bumper when they're passing a specific point on the road. And we saw how these, how, how these variables, how these five um, uh, fundamental traffic flow variables are actually related. Next, I'd like to introduce you to traffic flow fundamental identity. We call that identity because it's a very, it's really an identity. It's the, it's the foundation of traffic flow theory, where we say there is also, just like we had, you remember we said we had Q, we have U, we have K, we have flow, speed, and density, and we also had uh, headway and spacing, and we said flow is inverse of average headway and density is inverse of average spacing, right? So these are the kind of relationships so far we've learned. But there is another relationship that is referred to as traffic flow fundamental identity and that says flow is equal to speed multiplied by density. So K is density, U is speed, but which one? Time minus speed or space minus speed? I want to highlight that this U here is the space minus speed. And flow. We usually, some, we sometimes call that Q equal KV, Q is equal to KU, uh, or Q is equal to UK in this case. I mean, you know, you, you, you can use different notations, different orders, doesn't matter. The main point here is that flow is equal to speed, the space mean speed, multiplied by density. But how come? I mean, how come we make sure uh, this is correct? Let's do some dimensional analysis, like, like the unit, unit analysis, um, and uh, we can see uh, how come this is true. So flow, what was the unit of flow? Flow was number of vehicles over time, right? So it's, let's say, number of vehicles over time. So that's flow equal to a speed, speed unit, regardless of whether it's space minus speed or time minus speed, is distance divided by time, right? And what was density? Density, again, is number of vehicles divided by distance, right? So it would be number of vehicles divided by distance. So now you can see here, distance cross, distance and distance will cross out, and we'll have number of vehicles over time and number of vehicles over time on both sides of the equation. So when you do that unit um, analysis, um, you can actually see that this equation holds true, um, supported by that when we when we look at the units and how we can how they can convert to each other, um, we'll see that uh, it, they match. So traffic flow identity, traffic flow fundamental identity says Q is equal to KV or KU. Speed multiplied by density gives us flow, and the speed here again I highlight it's a space minus speed. So let's have a look at an example. Um, the speed of five vehicles are measured at the midpoint of a half a kilometer section of a roadway. The speeds for vehicles one, two to five are actually measured as 44, 42, 51, 49, and 46 kilometer per hour. Assuming all vehicles are traveling at constant speed, calculate the time minus speed and space minus speed. So I have a road, and the length is half a kilometer, and I do the measurements right in the middle, and I see uh, five vehicles are passing. I make the measurements of the instantaneous speeds of these vehicles at that point. So I have U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5. So U1 is 44, U2 is 42, U3 is 51, 
U4 is 49 and U5 is 46. How can I get the time mean speed? It's simply the arithmetic mean, which is the summation of all these U's over N. So 44 plus 42 plus 51 plus 49 plus 46 divided by 5. And how do I get the um, space mean speed? The space mean speed is actually the harmonic mean, uh, which is n over summation of 1 over ui, which is 5 divided by 1 over 44 plus 1 over 42 plus 1 over 51 plus 1 over 49 and plus 1 over 46. And if you calculate these, uh, let me do that quickly here. So the time mean speed would be equal to 46.4 kilometer per hour. And if I do the um, uh, space mean speed as well, um, so space mean speed would be 4617 if I haven't made any mistake in doing the calculations. And you can actually see in this very simple example, time minus speed and as space minus speed are slightly different. Time minus speed was 46.4, while a space minus speed was 46.17. Time minus speed is larger than the space minus speed. And that is usually the case. So we have this relationship that time minus speed is always either equal or greater than the space minus speed. We'll see an example that why this relationship holds. Um, but before that, let's have a look at a second example. Vehicle time headways and spacings are measured at a point along a highway from a single lane over the course of an hour. The average values are calculated as 2.5 seconds per vehicle for headway and 61 meter per vehicle for spacing. Calculate the average speed for the vehicle. So the example is saying we have a road and over a time period of one hour, we have measured the average headway being 2.5 second per vehicle. And the average spacing is 61 meter per vehicle. And we want to know what is the average speed. So how can I get the average speed? So from the headway, I know that average flow is the inverse of average headway. And for spacing, I know that average density is 1 over average spacing. So flow and headway had an inverse relationship similar to density and average spacing. Density and average spacing also have an inverse relationship. So if I calculate that is 1 over 2.5 second per vehicle. And this one is 1 over 61 meter per vehicle. But how can I get a speed here? We can use the traffic flow fundamental identity. Q is equal to KU. So therefore, U is Q over K. So now, if I simply put all these numbers into this equation, I get average speed, which is a space mean speed in this case, is 1 over 2.5 over 1 over 61. So that is 61 over 2.5. Make sure when you do all these measurements, either in, in this example or any other example or problem you're solving, you pay a very careful attention to the units, OK? So in this case, my headway was in second per vehicle, right? So let me write that down, second per vehicle. 
and my spacing was a meter per vehicle. Meter per vehicle. So if I want to calculate a speed here, it is uh, 61 divided by 2.5, which is 24.4. So U here would be US, let me put it that way, let me do it correctly. So the average, the space mean speed is actually uh, equal to 24.4, but what's the unit for it? It is meter per second, right? Because I have meter per vehicle in denominator, and in the denominator I have uh, second per vehicle. So it would be 24.4 meter per second. And that's the unit of the speed here. And if I want to convert that to kilometer per hour or meter per minute or whatever other speed unit that I'm interested in, you can do the conversion uh, as you wish. Let's have a look at the third example before we take a break. So consider uh, two vehicles running on a circular track of circumference of one kilometer. So the, the periphery or the circumference of this circle or this ring is one kilometer, and these vehicles are just moving around the ring nonstop. Uh, one vehicle travels at a constant speed of 30 kilometer. So let's say this vehicle is going at a constant speed of 30 kilometer per hour. And the other vehicle, U2, is going at a constant speed of 60 kilometer per hour. The problem is asking us to calculate the hourly flow at any location around the circular track. Calculate time mean speed, calculate the space mean speed, calculate average headway, calculate density, cal calculate average spacing, and let's at the end try to verify if the traffic flow fundamental identity actually holds, Q is equal to KU. So how can we calculate hourly flow at any location around the circular track? So here I would say, so imagine I'm standing right here, and I'm only seeing this, I don't see the entire track, I don't see the entire ring, I only see this part of the road, right? And in one hour, how many vehicle number one and how many vehicle number two I'm counting because they go in circles, right? So flow here would be in one single hour, and the length of this ro road is one kilometer, right? So, so let's have a look at this U1. So because the speed of this vehicle number one is 30 kilometer per hour, that means in one hour, this vehicle is moving, is, circula is, cir is circulating around this ring 30 times, right? So if I'm standing right here, I would count 30 times this vehicle number one. How about vehicle number two? Vehicle number two is going 60 kilometer per hour. And because the circumference of this circle, this ring is one kilometer, so if I'm standing on this point here, in one hour, I would actually see 60 times the other vehicle, right? So 60 times I would see the other vehicle circling around. So flow and over what? Over one hour. So flow is simply here, 90 vehicles per hour. How can we calculate time mean speed here? So the time mean speed, every time, again, for that specific time period, so every time I see a vehicle passing by, if I measure the speed, right? So we said we. So how many vehicles do I see in one hour? I see 90 vehicles, right? 30 of them are U1 and 60 of them are 60. So every time, so I would say yes. So I have one. Thirty, and then this will go to U ninety. 
So imagine again, I'm standing on this side of the road and I start counting and recording, uh, sorry, I'm not counting, I'm recording instantaneous speeds of every vehicle that is passing in front of me. And in one hour, I see 90 vehicles passing by, right? Uh, I see 90 vehicles passing by, 30 of them are going with this speed and 60 of them are going with this speed. So every time I actually start recording this speed, I would have 30 times 30 and actually 60 times 60. So I have U1 all the way to U90 over that one hour. And when I record the instantaneous speed of all these vehicles, 30 of them are going with 30 kilometer per hour and 60 of them are actually going with 60 kilometer per hour. So what would be the time mean speed here? The time mean speed is simply the arithmetic average of all these instantaneous speeds that I've calculated, which we can express it as 30 times multiplied by 30 plus 60 times multiplied by 60 divided by n, the total number of vehicles that I will have seen over that one hour period. And I've seen 90 vehicle in that period, right? And that gives me, let's calculate that. It's 30 times 30, which is 900 plus 60 times 60 is 360, 3600 divided by 90. So it gives me 50. So 50 is 50 what? 50 kilometer per hour, right? Yes. So 50 kilometer per hour is my, uh, Sorry for the bad handwriting. I have a pen here on my, using on my tablet and I'm not very comfortable with it yet. Um, so the, the, the time mean of speed is 50 kilometer per hour. The next part of the problem is actually much more interesting. Um, we wanna calculate the space mean of speed as well. So how do we calculate the space mean of speed? We have two ways of calculating that. One is, uh, we said we have all these 90 records of speeds. If I calculate the harmonic mean instead of arithmetic mean, it would give me the space mean speed. Or simply, alternatively, I can just say, hey, how about I, ha I assume, uh, I imagine that I'm uh, flying over the circular track, what do I see? I don't see 90 vehicles moving around. I only see two vehicles, right? So if I'm flying over this ring, uh, yes, all these, these two vehicles are circulating around, but I only see two, right? So the space mean speed would simply be, because I'm only seeing two vehicles, 30 plus 60 divided by two. And that is 45 kilometer per hour. So the space mean speed would be 45 kilometer per hour. As I said, if you're not comfortable with this way of looking at the problem that, hey, you're flying, you only see two vehicles and their speed is 30 and 60. And if you average that, it would give you 45. Let's, you can calculate the same thing if you take the harmonic mean of all these uh, 90 records of a speed as we have, similar to what we did, uh, how, how we did it with the time in a speed. If you calculate the harmonic mean of speed, you get 45 kilometer per hour. So again, look, time in a speed was 50 kilometer per hour, while a space mean of speed was 45 kilometer per hour. So again, we're seeing another example that UT is actually greater than US. How can I calculate average headway? Average headway is simply the inverse of flow or flow is the inverse of average headway, right? So if my flow was 90 vehicle per hour, I would say my average headway is one over flow, which is one over 90 hour per kilometer. And 
Um, what is my density? How can I calculate density here? Let's go back to the basic definition of density. We said density is equal to the number of vehicles we see on the road divided by the length of the road. So in this case, I only see two vehicles over one kilometer, right? So my density is simply two vehicles per kilometer. So what would be the average of spacing then? We said there's a relationship between the spacing and density and average of spacing is the inverse of density. So it would be one over two kilometer per vehicle. And let's verify if Q is actually equal to KU. And U here is what? T space mean speed, right? So let's see. We said flow is 90. So we want to see whether Q is equal to KU. So flow is 90. Vehicle, make sure the units are consistent. So uh, 90 vehicle per hour. Density was two vehicle per kilometer. So that's OK so far. And what was the space mean speed? Space mean speed was 45 kilometer per hour. 45 kilometer per hour. Yay, we just verified that Q is equal to KU. 90 is equal to two multiply, uh, equal to two multiply 45. If you have mistakenly used time mean speed instead of space mean speed, what would you get? You would not get, you, you, you weren't, you weren't be able to verify the traffic flow fundamental identity because you would say KU is actually two multiplied by 50. Here I'm mistakenly using time mean speed. And this gives me 100 while the actual flow is 90 vehicle per hour. So hopefully with this example, um, it has become a, bl a bit more clear what is the difference between time mean speed and space mean speed, the relationship between uh, flow speed and density, the relationship between density and spacing, flow and headway, and how all of these are related. And again, how important the units that you're working with um, are as well. So uh, let's take a break.